Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Uh, today we're doing problem 62 unique paths and uh, this is another one. I think the second one in a row now where I've, I, I've taken a, a viewer request and I'm, I'm answering it, uh, answering the question they wanted me to go over. So like as I always say, do let me know down below uh, what questions you want to see next. I, I, I do legitimately go through every comment. I, I try to reply to everything and um, and and take any requests as I am right now. So yeah, uh, don't forget to put those down below. And of course, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that, all that fun stuff. Um, but with with that out of the way, let's let's take a look at unique paths. So it's an old problem. It's been around for quite a while, but it's a decent one. It's a decent one nonetheless. And and we're told that a a robot is located in the top left corner of, of some grid. So this grid right over here is m by n. Uh, so uh, m being the number of rows and n being the number of, of columns. It says that the robot can either move uh, only down or right at any given point in time, and it's trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid. How many possible unique paths are there uh, in, in this 3 by 7 grid, for instance? There are a total of 28. I won't go through through walking, uh, through walking through each one of them, but maybe if we think about a smaller grid, which is a 3 by 2 so imagine just these first two columns over here. There are, there are three ways to do it. One would be by going right, down, down, or down, right, sorry, down, down, right, or down, right, down. So these three uh, options listed right here. I think in that smaller example, it's it's easier to picture and, and, and see all the combinations. We So we're going to take a look at this uh, through what I think is, is kind of the most intuitive approach. At least it is one for me. Uh, and then at the end, we will have kind of maybe, or not maybe, but we will have one more solution that I'll give, which I, I think is a bit of a, Probably a bit of a surprise solution, maybe one that that, that we don't see uh, immediately. Definitely one that I didn't see immediately. I don't think I would have gotten into 100 years, but I'll, I'll throw that in as like a bonus at the end. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start by by recreating. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll recreate the, the 3 by 7 grid. And maybe I could have done this beforehand, but now you guys get to watch me in my elaborate process. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six, I think I need one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cool. And, and we'll do three rows. And so we need to figure out how to get from start to finish. And the only thing we can do, so we need to count the number of ways that there are to get from start to finish. We don't actually have to output the paths. Um, what we do need to do though is to, is just, to, sorry, like I was saying, just to output the, the number of ways. Um, and, and the robot, again, can only move right or down. So if we, if we were to, to, to solve this problem, I, I think there's like a there's a brute force solution to this, which is just kind of doing it recursively. And and what the recursive solution would say would be, um, let me somehow you know figure out uh, if if I'm if I'm right over here, let's say I'm I'm, I'm at the starting position, I need to determine um, how is it that I'm going to figure out what's happening uh, almost later on. If you and what I mean by later on is like if I'm if I'm right here, I don't I don't necessarily know how far I need to go to get here. Sure, I can calculate it, but that, that, that's not going to help me in terms of actually building a recursive relationship. What we need to understand, and, and this is kind of one of the, the key insights in, um, in, into building this, is, is noticing that if I'm sitting at some arbitrary square, let's say I'm, I'm sitting right here at the start, the number of ways that I have to get down to the end will be dependent on the, the squares that are to the right of me and below me. The reason that's the case is because we can only take two steps. We can take a step to the right or we can take a step down. So what I can do is I can write some sort of recursive function that, that says, let me let me like find out how many um, how many paths there are from here, how many paths are there from here, um, sum them together and that'll tell me how many paths there are here. And, and so if you if you think about that, it's like, okay, I, I think that's kind of digestible and I, I think I'll, I'll elaborate on that a bit further in just a couple minutes, but um, we, we then need to say like, what's my terminal condition? At what point do I say like I'm, I've terminated and I've, I've kind of found the end? And and I think this is one of the key insights that we need to glean here. Um, if, if I ever find myself here in this in this column right over here, okay, in this final column, or I find myself in this final row, the row all the way at the bottom, how many ways are there for me to get to the end from here? If I find myself right here, I would argue there's only one way to get to the end, and that way is straight down. If I find myself here, same thing. Because remember, I can only move to the right or down. If I find myself here, I can only move to the right or down. And since down would be out of bounds, I can only move to the right and right and right. So if I think about it, really, if at any point I find myself on a column here or on a in the final column, it's not on a column, in the final column or in the bottom row, 
then from there, I would only return one. That would be my terminal condition. Say if, I, if I'm at bottom row or, or rightmost column, return one, and, and that's the end of that. The problem that we're going to find there is it, it's really similar. It, it's akin to the problem that we have when we're trying to calculate like the, uh, the Fibonacci sequence um, recursively and in that we'll, we'll be doing multiple calculations over again. Um, and so this pro, uh, problem, sorry, does lend itself as a, a DP problem. I've done other ones that I think are much better, uh, that are much more thorough explanations of how to go about thinking about uh, DP problems. So I'd, I'd suggest you check out my channel for those. I'll drop them in the description, but I, I think off the top of my head, like the, I believe the longest um, subsequence of a string, I think that's the one where I, I really touch on it thoroughly. So I'd suggest looking at that one if you're interested to know more about DP. Um, but what we notice through this recursive solution is that I'll, I'll basically be calculating some of these cells multiple times over as I'm doing it recursively. A way to avoid that, and not only that, but if I've got more than, like in Python, if I have more than 997 recursive calls, I'm going to get a stack overflow. In JavaScript, it would be like 10,000, and, and each language has its own barrier, but that, that's like a limitation of doing things recursively. Um, I could then ask myself if I'm I've got calculations that I'm repeating over again multiple times. Is there a way for me to store them off to the side and to say, well, let me remember this, and then I'll, I'll grab that number using constant time later on. And, and that's kind of the key to doing this problem. Uh, I think with, with problems like these, I find it more intuitive to think to myself, like, if I'm trying to figure out how to get to the end, sure, I can say, let me go from the start and, and try to calculate all my paths this way. Another way, again, that I find more intuitive is to say, let me start at the end and then work backwards. Right? So it's just a, a way of flipping the problem on its head that's equally as logically valid. What I'd tell myself is I'd, I'd almost think about filling out a grid like this and say from any given position, how many different ways are there for me to get to the, to the end from where I am. If I'm already sitting at the end, there's just one way, that's it. I'd, or you can argue zero ways, it won't really matter, but you know, there, there, there's one way to get to the end and that's by standing where I am. If I'm at either of these positions, we, we determine, you know, logically that there's only one way to get to the end by, by continuously going down. I'd also make the argument that, and again, I think you guys will agree, that if I'm in the bottom row, I can't go down, I can only go right. So if I find myself in any one of these spots, the only way for me to go to the end is this way. So there's only one path to get to the end. Remember, I'm not counting the number of steps here, just the total number of paths. Once we determine this, I can then say, all right, how do I start filling out the rest of this? Let's say I'm sitting right here, okay? Well, if I go this way, there's only one way to get to the end. If I go this way, there's only one way to get to the end. So from here, I can either go right or I can go down. If I go right, there's gonna be one way. If I go down, there's gonna be one way. So in total, there are two ways to get to the end. Same thing over here. I can go down or I can go right. If I go to the right, I, there's one way. If I go down, there are two ways. Right? So there are a total of three here. Following this pattern, I'm gonna sum these numbers up this way. I'm gonna get six here, right? One and three, there are four ways of getting to the end. Five ways, six ways, seven ways, by taking into account how many ways are there to get to the end if I step right or if I step down. This will be 10, this will be 15, right? By adding these two, this will be 21, this will be 28. And lo and behold, that was our output right here, 28. So the key thing to realize here, apart from the, the, the final column and, and bottom row situation, is that at any given RC, maybe I'll, I'll put them in, in array brackets like this, uh, the total number of, of paths would be uh, R plus one of C, or R plus one C, so that would be how many ways are there to go from below, uh, plus how many ways are there to go if I take a step to the right. R, C plus, so that's to the right. So this is below, and this is right. And this is an attempt at a plus sign. All right, so that's really what the, the bulk of this, uh, of this problem is, is determining this. So all we can do is really create an M by N matrix. We can fill it up with ones, just so everything can be one by default, right? So these are, these are all kind of initiated the way we want them to be. And then from here on in, we can go backwards and just fill in uh, the sum of the element to the right and the element below. And we do all that, we eventually return the, the initial entry and that'll give us the total number of unique paths. Uh, this is in an O of M by N solution, uh, again, rows by columns, in terms of both time and space. What you may notice, if, you're, if you kind of think about this a bit, is that 
at any given point, as I'm filling in, let's say I'm filling in this row first, all I really need is the row below me and my row itself. I don't need to know anything above me. Uh, so you can make the argument, and you'd be very valid in making the argument, that there's a way to optimize this code such that once I've filled these values in, I can actually start just reusing two rows and cycling them through as I'm building like the equivalent of what this table would be, and then finally returning this, this final answer over here. You may even be able to reduce that to one row. I'm not going to do that in this, in this video because I think that if you're in an interview setting and, and you kind of walk through your logic on this is the, the brute force recursion, this is how we break it into DP like problem, we memoize items, you've really like you've gotten 90% of the way there. Everything else is, um, is just kind of the, the cherry on top. Um, so that's why I, I just really want to focus on, on drilling this home and not, not being too bothered by, by additional uh, nuances, though, again, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know that that's kind of what the, what the next step in optimization uh, would be. And so you can, you can kind of feel free to, to take a stab at that yourselves. For the actual code, it'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to create an array called DP, and, and this is going to be a nested array that's going to replicate exactly the input that we had. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with ones. Uh, so for every item uh, in the range of, this is going to be, one of these is going to represent the row. So I'm, I'm going to want M rows. So I'll say for a uh, blank in range of M. And this would be a uh, range of N, right, just for the number of columns. And so initially, imagine this whole table is created and it's initialized with ones everywhere. What this allows me to do is to say, look, I've already kind of taken care of uh, this row here in this column. They're already filled in. And then from here, I can just start I don't know where I'm going with this drawing. Uh, from here, I can start. I can start filling in this way uh, and and upwards and, and kind of propagate through backwards until until the start of the array. So code's gonna be pretty simple. And, and again, after all this, we're we're going to want to return a DP of zero zero, which will be that initial initial entry here. I want to go through uh, what I want to go through this. This whole array, and I, I want to start at this item over here and, and add the element to the right and below me. So I want to say for R in range in the length of DP, and for C, so for every column in the range of, of length of DP at that given row, uh, we want to say that DP of RC is equal to the sum of DPR plus 1C plus DPRC plus 1. So the number of paths from where I'm standing right now is equal to the number of paths uh, from the cell below me plus the number of paths uh, uh, from the cell to the right of me, or I guess for you guys, sorry, this way, to the right of me. And believe it or not, that's it. That's all I got to do. Um, I'm going to run this super quickly, and I've, I've made a mistake here, obviously. Uh, list index out of range. Uh, why have I done that? Okay, the reason I've done that is because I need to start from the second last element. So second last row, second last column. That's the part that I forgot. Uh, so I was going too quickly there. Minus two, minus one, minus one. And so we're, this means we're going to start from the second last row, and we're going to go until the, until the beginning. And, and this means we're going to start from the second last column, and we're going to propagate backwards to the beginning. I'm going to try that one more time. That seems to submit, and just to prove it to you guys that we're all good, this is what we get, 36 millisecond runtime. But, 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 um, notice this runtime over here. So, by the way, this is a this is a good solution. Like, you get this far in an interview, again, it's, it's all good. Why is it then that, like, what is that? I'm going to embarrass myself here, 86, right? 86.7% of uh, submissions seem to be better than 36 milliseconds. Is there a better way to do this? Using DP, no. This memory, again, you can fix if you kind of take that table and squish it down to two rows, maybe even one. Um, but again, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, I'm not concerned with this either. Again, great solution, but this is where that little uh, bonus solution comes in. Um, there is a math way to do this, and the math way to do this is actually an O of 1 solution. And for those of you who are interested, I'll, I'll just kind of walk you through it again. This is bonus. You really don't need to know this. If you've gotten this far and you're happy with what you got, again, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, um, because it, like this will get you through. These last couple minutes here, I'll just dedicate to, to showing you what the, what the super clever uh, solution to this is. Notice the following. We've got a three, uh, three by seven grid here. Our robot needs to take, in total, in, in some way, shape, or form, it needs to take two steps down and one, two, three, four, five, six steps to the right, okay? So whether it takes like six steps to the right and then two steps down, or it takes two steps down and six steps to the right, or, you know, right, down, right, down, right, 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 it can take any permutation of these, all right? So keyword permutation. We know for sure that our robot needs to go down, it needs to go down, and it needs to go right six times, three, four, five, six. 
Now, again, this could be kind of jumbled up. We can have down and then a whole bunch of, oops, then a whole bunch of rights. Uh, right, 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 right. Or, or again, any combination or any permutation of uh, of these. We can kind of maybe the, the down is here and here, or it's here. Oh, well, or it's here and here. I think you guys get the picture. Um, there, there is a there is a mathematical way we can just we can calculate this. Um, the way we do it would be as follows. And so I'm not going to go through like the proof here because this is like a combinatorics thing. So if you're interested, you can look up a uh, combinatorics, discrete math, and and um, the permutation and, and that kind of theory. And, and you can dive into it there again. I'm not going to make a whole video on this, but we can calculate the total number of these permutations, and it would be equal to um, m plus n factorial divided by um, or in general, you know, let me, let me make this just like a general formula. Uh, our, our solution here would be a plus b factorial, where one's the number of rows, the other's the number of columns, divided by a factorial times b factorial. And if we just run this calculation, this will give us an, uh, a constant time solution to the number of permutations of, you know, in this case, two down and six rights, and, and any order they can really fall in. Um, how we'd simplify this is, is as follows in our code. Our number of rows is m, right? But we said that we needed to take two steps down, not three. We're taking m minus one steps down. So I would have m minus one, you know, that would be my a term, plus n minus one, right? So we said we had seven columns, but we're only taking six steps to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. We would take that factorial, we would divide that by, you know, again, this would be m minus 1 factorial times n minus 1 factorial. And so this would kind of simplify. I'm going to move myself a bit over. Uh, this would be m plus n minus 2 factorial over, you know, this part I'm, I'll just copy over. You're not expected to get the solution, okay? So, like, no interviewer is sitting there waiting for you to be like, all right, if they don't get here, like, they're fucking out of here. It's not happening, all right? Again, this is just, like, a, a bit of a nice to know. I think now if I don't if I don't mess this up, uh, I believe that in Python, in Python, you don't need to implement the factorial from scratch. In other languages, you would have to. So it's a bit tedious. Um, not too difficult, but a bit tedious. Um, whereas here, we can just say, uh, look, we can say, uh, I think it's from math import factorial, I think. Uh, don't yell at me if I if I got this wrong. But we'd say we would just have to return factorial of uh, m. This would be m plus n minus two, right? So we had here m plus n minus two factorial divided by, and then we'd have uh, these two items. So we'd have kind of factorial of what did we say it was m minus one times factorial of n minus one. And I, I I think that I got the the syntax right here. So if I click submit there, um, so for whatever reason that one didn't go much fast. It it, it went slower. Um, the the run times are gonna vary, but this is like this is your your constant time solution. There you go. See that's a lot better. Um, this is a constant time solution to this problem. So if you see that your performance is really low, that would be the reason why that that explains that discrepancy. Uh, I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you like the the bonus section at the bottom. As I said at the start, like let me know down below if you have uh, if you have any questions you want me to answer that I haven't already. Always happy to take those and, and help you guys out in any way. Um, yeah, we're, we're pushing. We're almost at 100 subscribers. So if, uh, if you smash that subscribe button, uh, I will love you. That is all. I'll see you next time. Peace.